I have released a comprehensive guide on how to calibrate any computer with a built-in display. Since then, i1 Profiler has gone through numerous updates and X-Rite has released a few new calibration devices. And rather than focusing on both Mac and PC, what I'm going to do is focus specifically on the Macintosh system. This will cover any Mac laptop, iMac, or Apple Pro Display XDR. Specifically for the Mac laptop system, when you take it to different environments, sometimes the screen brightness would change according to that environment. I'm going to show you how you can set up the proper luminance level on this display and how to get back to that level every time. I'm Art. This is Art is Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. There are a few things to prepare your Mac for calibration. First, turn your Mac display on and leave it running for 15 minutes. This would give the backlight the opportunity to warm up and stabilize. This does not matter if your Mac is new or old. Secondly, if you have an Apple laptop, make sure to plug it in. Afterwards, go into System Preferences Energy Saver. Make sure that your display does not turn off in the middle of a calibration by setting the display turn off to never. You can always change that back later. Then afterwards, there are a few more display settings that you need to turn off. I have made a guide on that and I will put a link up here. Check that video out first. I'll wait. Awesome. Now that you're back, we're ready to get started with our calibration. Let's launch i1 Profiler. I currently have two computers for this setup. One of them is a 16 inch MacBook Pro that has a touch bar. This way I can give you a demo on how to use a touch bar to find the proper luminance level. And I also have a 2015 MacBook Pro that does not have the touch bar and has the regular function button at the very top row. This will work for any Apple laptop without a touch bar and also any iMac or Pro Display XDR that you will use with your Apple keyboard and Apple system too. For the 16-inch MacBook Pro, I will be using X-Rite latest device, the i1 Display Pro Plus, to run the calibration and demo. And for the 2015 MacBook Pro, I will be using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. So both of these are colorimeter devices. In i1 Profiler, user mode, choose advanced. This way we can specify all of our calibration setting. Under licensing, because I have a colorimeter plug-in, only the first three icons will show green. The rest will show red question mark. If you want all of those to show green, what you need is a color spectrophotometer device. If you have a colorimeter plug-in, you launch i1 Profiler and there are no green check marks, what you want to do is check the USB connection of your device to the laptop because the program is not recognizing it. There is no need to do a transfer license. Transfer license only apply to the first generation i1 Pro and that is to transfer it so that you can use it with the i1 Pro 2. If you have a different device, you can choose it here from the application setting. From there, we are ready to start. Top left, display profiling. I am at the display setting screen where I will set the calibration parameter. Starting at the very top, if you have multiple display hookup, you can choose the display that you want to calibrate. Right below it is the backlight technology. Best recommendation is to keep this at the default value because X-Rite is constantly updating their database. However, if you know for a fact that your display use a different backlight, you can choose that or after the calibration, you feel that you're not getting a good result, you can change the display backlight then too and run a recalibration again. White point, I will choose and recommend CIE Illuminance D65 because at 6500 Kelvin, our eyes see the most color at this spectrum and all of the devices out there, all of the displays, whether it is a standalone external display, your phone, your tablet, or laptop are all calibrated at D65. This way you're editing your creative work on the display white point that is going to match closely with the other ones that are out there. Luminance. The best recommended range here is between 80 to 120 candela. This is extremely important for photography, but it also applies for pro video work and other types of creative too. For this one, I will choose 80. Gamma, I will leave mine at the default value, which is 2.2 because I do photography. However, if you do pro video work, you can come in here and set this to BT1886. Contrast ratio, I will leave mine at native. Flare correct and ambient light smart control, I will have those unchecked. From here, we're ready to move on to the next display profiling workflow stage. 
you can click on workflow at the bottom here or the next arrow. I am now in the profile setting. You can leave all this at the default value. Profile version 4 and all the other settings here will work just fine. Click on next. Patch set. This is where you would choose how many colors you want i1 profiler to measure. You have three options, small, medium, large. I will choose large so that it will generate a more precise profile. Click on next. In this screen, we're ready to start our measurement. We want to turn off automatic display control because we don't want i1 profiler to automatically adjust the display brightness. And this applies throughout any Apple device with a built-in display because you always want to know the display brightness value for your computer. And I will show you how to do that in a moment. Check adjust brightness control and RGB gain manually because we're going to be manually dialing in the brightness for our display. Once you're done with that, start measurement. i1 profiler will show a guide specific to the device that you're using. I have a colorimeter is telling me to rotate the cap to expose the lens. On all the color measurement devices, there's always a felt lining surrounding the lens or the measurement sensor. This way you can do a calibration in a fairly well lit environment such as the one that I have here and it will be okay. What you want to do there is making sure to tilt the display back this way the sensor would lay flush with the display, avoiding any ambient light from contaminating the result. Press OK, then Next. It will run a few calibration patches and get us to the brightness adjustment screen. There is no need to go in and set the display ICC profile to any other ICC profile before you run the calibration. When you launch i1 Profiler, the program has already gone in and apply a linear profile. Therefore, there is no bias before you run a calibration. Now I'm at the brightness adjustment screen. I'm going to start first with an Apple MacBook Pro with touch bar. To adjust the system on the touch bar, you will simply come and tap on the display brightness. And what you want to do is pull the display brightness up all the way. The nice thing about this system is that you can slide this up and down like a DJ doing a rip. However, that won't really work well for color management. What you want to do instead is tap on the display brightness icon and use the handler on either side by pressing it that way to change the brightness of the display. This way you have more granular control and you can also count the number of notches that you have to come down from full brightness to get a proper luminance level. For this display, I will try to do it at 5. At 5, I'm able to achieve a luminance level of 96. I feel that 96 is a touch high, however, it is still within the range of 80 to 120 candela. Let's try one more down to 6 and let's see where that puts us. So at 6 notches down, it puts us at 70 candela and that's much lower than what I like my display to be. So what I'm going to do is bring the brightness up 1 so that is 5 down from full brightness. I'm going to calibrate this laptop at 96 candela and this will be the value that I am going to use. Because the laptop is a portable device, this is one of the quick and easiest way to bring the brightness level back within range anytime you are ready to do color critical work on your system. Let's move on to a 15 inch MacBook Pro. For this, I will use my 2015 MacBook Pro with the standard function key. This will also work for any non-touch bar Apple laptop your iMac if you're using the Apple keyboard and also the Pro Display XDR if you're using Apple keyboard along with an Apple computer. To do this, I would bring the brightness up all the way again and on these older systems, the function key that you'll be using is F1 and F2 to control the display brightness. Pull it up all the way and pick a number that you want to bring it down. For the laptop, I find that a number between 5 to around 8 works really well. Let's try 7 for this one. At 7, we were able to achieve a candela value of 79. This is one candela below my 80 threshold, but I am going to stick with 7 because I think that this is going to be a really fantastic value for this laptop. A quick tip for those of you who are calibrating on an iMac or Pro Display XDR. It may be easier for you to bring the brightness down all the way and count how many notches from the darkest level you have to bring up to achieve the luminance value that you want. The reason why is because the backlit on those displays are much stronger and more intense than the one on the laptop that I'm demonstrating in this video. 
Let's go calibrate. At this point, I1 Profiler will be measuring 461 patches. I will leave this running and come back to this when it's done so that we can validate our profile, see how good our result is, and then talk about a few more things and wrap up this video. Now that the profiling is almost done, x right I1 Profiler is doing a few more patches. This is the part that we call iterative profiling. It's double checking value, making sure that it's good. And then afterwards, we will save the profile. Take the device off the screen, put the cap back on. I'm going to leave my screen tilted like this for now because afterwards I'm going to come in and do a profile validation. Click on next. It will say that the measurement value was successful. Click next. In the ICC profile screen, this is where I would save the ICC profile and also give it a name. In this name, I generally recommend the device the date of the profile and any other informations you may want to include that are relevant to that specific device. For example, if you use a different gamma curve, BT1886, you may want to denote that in there. For this one, what I will do is change the date convention so that is year, year, month, month, day, day. And what I will do is denote how many down from full brightness I need to do to achieve this profile. So for this laptop it was five, so I will put D5 in there and it will have a .icc profile. Profile reminder, because I'm doing a demo, I will have it check on none. Ambient light monitoring off and click save profile. It will generate a dialog saying profile saved successfully and you will notice once you press OK that your screen color will change slightly. That's because it has already gone in and applied the profile to the system. This will give you a quick preliminary report CIE, we want D65. We are able to get really close to D65 to 6496. I will say this, that if you're only a few points or 10 points off, I wouldn't even worry about it. Even if it's like 64 to 65, our eyes can't really discern the difference between the two. Black Luminance Native, we are able to achieve 0 0.073 candela. The Luminance Achieve uh, was not 80 candela, that's for sure, but it's okay. And then the contrast ratio, we have native and we were able to achieve around 1,090 to 1, which is fantastic. At the bottom here on the workflow, there is a display QA. Click on that. In the display QA, we will run a profile validation to check and see how our profile is compared to the reference value that's supposed to be. What I'm going to use is the x right Color Checker Classic Chart, which has 24 patches. You can click Next. And this is the start measurement. There's no setting to dial in here. Hang the device on the screen, Acknowledge, click Next. The program will run through 24 color patches. This will be much faster than the full calibration. And what it's going to give us at the end is a delta E value. The delta E value is going to describe the value of how off this color that's showing on the screen is compared to the reference value. What you want for a good display is a delta E generally below five. What you want for a really great display is a delta E value below two. Now that that's done, take the device off the display, put the cap back on, click on next, and now we have our QA report. In this QA report, it tells us a few things. It also highlight the color that are off the most as well, or the one that has the highest delta E value. I am going to leave the delta E type here at 2000 and change the average and max delta E threshold. So I will change the average delta E threshold to two and the max to five and see if we still pass and we still pass the validation with that. So on average, the lowest Delta E that I was able to achieve on this laptop screen is 0 0.6. That is really amazing. And on the highest from all the patches is 1.7. So there's one patch that is reading the Delta E higher than the rest. And on, you know, average on all the patches is around one. So that's okay. 
What I would do is save this calibration report to a desktop. This way I have an HTML file of the values that I was able to achieve from this profile. And what I will also do is add to trending. Then we can click on next to see our trending level. As you see here, I've run a few calibrations and we can see that our trending is going down. As long as our trending is going down or is staying linear, that means a straight line, we are good. If it starts to trend upward, I may consider recalibrating because that means that the values are starting to go off more from the reference value. And if it continues to trend upwards, it could be an indicator that something is going wrong with the LCD backlight or the LCD panel itself. Click on home and we are done with the calibration. A few things I like to show here is the calibration report. That is the one that we exported out. So it puts all the color patches in a nice tabular format. And it also gives us the Delta E value for each one of those colors too. And because I'm on a Macintosh system, there is a program that ships with every Mac called Color Sync Utility, where you can come in, load the profile and visualize and compare the profile. This is the one that I have just calibrated. It looks really great. If you rotate it around, it's smooth on all the sides. That means we have a great profile. I will hold this for comparison and pull in DCI-P3. So the DCI-P3 fits within the custom profile that I was able to calibrate there. What this means is that the custom calibration was able to produce a color gamut that is larger than the reference DCI-P3. So if you're a photographer, how does this compare to, say, Adobe RGB? Well, you see that there is a discrepancy right away where our display color gamuts form much closer to DCI-P3 rather than Adobe RGB. So Adobe RGB, you can see more of the blues and greens, where this one, you see much less of that. This is a difference between a software caliber display and a hardware caliber display. So if you have a hardware caliber display, you can set the color gamut of that specific panel to Adobe RGB or any other colors gamut for that matter and edit in that specific color gamut. Because these are software calibrated displays, that means that the moment they have been calibrated from the factory and Apple calibrate their device to DCI-P3, there's really no way to change the color gamut. There is no gamut translation on the ICC profile and that's what we're seeing here. So I hope that you find this guide on how to calibrate any Mac with a built-in display helpful. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified when I upload cool new videos. And until next time, art is right.